This might be the perfect 3D printed part, but it's not new. It was actually designed 10 years ago. So why haven't you seen it? So this is the Baker's Cube, and the Baker's Cube was designed 10 years ago in 2015. It was designed by a small design group who were making files for Thingiverse back at that time when all the files were given away for free. And it became the number one download on Thingiverse for many months back in 2015 when 3D printing was a lot smaller. But it was effectively a way of replacing measuring cups. Most measuring cups come in this chain just like this where you have them dangling around all over the place. What the Baker's Cube sought to do was to combine all of your measuring cups into one single object. And it was actually beautiful because you did have your one cup, your half cup, your teaspoons and tablespoons all combined into one single brick, which seems like a brilliant idea because it does look really nice. It's something you can leave out and doesn't just have kind of this jankiness of normal measuring cups. Ultimately, with his popularity at that time, a year or two later, it was pulled from Thingiverse and the model disappeared and the designers went after doing a crowdfunding for it in order to take it and get it mass produced. Funnily enough, if they had made it today, they could have used a service like Teleport where they could have just uploaded the model and combined it to their store and then they would have had hundreds of 3D printers to make and ship these items directly to their customers for them. So they never would have had to get a mold or get any sort of manufacturing set up. They would have just uploaded the file, and then when somebody bought it, Slant3D could print the item and ship it. You can check out Teleport more over at slantpod.com. But they went after trying to mold this, but that's when they kind of ran into the first big issue. This part was designed for 3D printing, and it's kind of one of the reasons that it was really amazing. The things that make a product really, really good are number one, does it solve a problem? Number two, can you demonstrate that? So is it marketable? And number three, is it manufacturable? But let's go ahead and dive into that a little bit more because there's actually a couple of issues with this part as it is. Number one, it does solve the problem. It simplifies this mass of cups into a nice single beautiful part that can almost just sit on your counter and look really good. And you're able to use the general cups fairly easily because you can scoop out just as it is. But there comes to be an issue when you get to the teaspoons and the tablespoons. These things are so small that no one would actually like dump a bottle into one of these little measurements up on top. So it's kind of cumbersome and leveling it out is a little bit weird and dumping it is a little bit weird the smaller measurements just don't really do it very well. So it's not really something that would have really high utility to where you reach for it all the time because the traditional scooping cups are just kind of handier to use in some ways. But it is demonstrable and this is why it was so popular at the time. This thing clicks. People understand why it is nifty and cool and interesting and you can show off videos of it scooping up flour and leveling out and it makes great photos of being in that context. So yes, it does solve the problem. It doesn't solve it perfectly well, but it solves a problem. And number two, it is really demonstrable. It is marketable. But why didn't this product take off even more than that? Now we come down to the manufacturing and the design. And for this, we actually went ahead and redesigned it straight from scratch so that we would go from the normal design to a more modern design. If we look at the original design, most of it is very, very good. It has a nice flat base. It has rounded edges on the bottom. It has thin walls all the way through. The text is well pronounced. There are no overhangs. This is a robust design. It can be printed just as well with PETG, PLA, ABS, TPU. It can be made with any material and it can be made at any resolution. Settings are agnostic to this part because the CAD design itself allows it to be made anywhere, anytime, which again allows it to be a product that can just be uploaded to a factory like Teleport and mass produced without having to do a bunch of tuning or slicer settings and that kind of thing. So it's really useful in that direction. Additionally, they rounded out all the edges. It looks really good. They even made the one cup the top so there's no top surfaces to where you have to worry about the top appearance looking different from the sides. Overall, it's a really uniform and beautiful type of design. But some of the things they did on this that made it not solve the problem as well kind of hurt it. As we said, they have all of these quarter teaspoons and that kind of thing up on top, which are not really usable because you can't put this down in the baking soda box to pull out what you need. So it's almost overcomplicated because there were too many features thrown into it. 
This is what we did to redesign it here. And we basically took the concept and just simplified it down even more. Rather than having all the teaspoons and that kind of thing included in that, we just designed one that just has the cups. So you have a nice flat side there to display it on and then the main cups right there. In addition to that, instead of having these big old flat chunky edges, which make it kind of tough to pour through stuff, we went ahead and actually leveled it out and sharpened the edges so that it's even narrower and again, helps improve that uniformity of the surfaces because the green one has no side that looks different from any other side. It's really, really uniform and beautiful. Whereas you do kind of still have a top on this one and obviously have a bottom to it. Everything else lines up okay, but that's even better here. And now you can actually use the individual cups of the new Slant 3D model without having to worry about them kind of shoving stuff around rather than actually scooping it. But then the question becomes, Gabe, what do you do about the tablespoon, teaspoon, that kind of thing? Well, we went ahead and just uh, upgraded that as well. So you have the cups right here, but then you get the same sort of aesthetic with a very small design right here to where you can have all of the smaller teaspoons and stuff in the nice brick design, the combined design, to where it's still usable, but it has that same kind of aesthetic that's really beautiful and looks really nice to go along with the main one. So you have your tablespoons and you have your cups and that kind of thing as opposed to the Baker's Cube, which tried to do all of it, we were able to simplify it down to just some basic shapes to where you get all of the same utility, all the same look, all the same aesthetics, but it is more manufacturable, it looks better, and it is more functional, so you were actually able to solve the part. So while the first Baker Cube was manufacturable with 3D printing, though it was not manufacturing with molding, it's an excellent example of making something that can utilize 3D printing, because this shape is really difficult to manufacture with anything other than printing. All of these cavities and interiors and different orientations make it almost impossible to mold traditionally, or you have to use some odd little type of machining technique, which is really wasteful and expensive. But with printing, you can make this on demand for a couple of dollars, and printing allows a geometry control that you otherwise would never have. And you can create all of these different variations of parts that, so you can experiment with the design and evolve it from this to something that can work better and better. So the Baker's Cube is just a fantastic example of a product that really checks many of the boxes and can continue to use 3D printing to be refined more. It does solve a problem. It looks really cool and is a great concept. And with some more refinement, it can be designed to be really, really manufacturable in a way that was never possible before. And you can continue to iterate it to add new variations, improve it, and change it over time. If you want to get a hold of these files and start selling them yourself, you can get a hold of them over at 3D Sanctuary, over on Thangs, but you can also sign up for Teleport for free and start selling your own designs because these types of simple, beautiful designs are so rare and more of them need to be brought out into the world. Many of them actually exist already. There are models that people are printing that are like this, but they're not put into production. The reason we built services like Teleport was so that a kid in a dorm room can design an amazing product and bring it to market without having to build their own factory themselves. So if you wanna go start your own business or if you wanna design your own product, go ahead and check out Teleport right now and see what you can start selling because printing allows you to create some really amazing things and you can continue to evolve over time and create something really amazing. Have a great day, everybody.